Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands, where last time we came here to the big empty and started doing some experiments into how fast I can make my character, together with, um, yes, kind of putting myself into debt because I kind of had to cheat to borrow caps from the future. And today, we're going to be doubling down on that. Not just the speed, by the way, the debt too, because, uh, okay, I need to begin with another small confession. You see, I didn't just forget I needed to bring a giant pile of money into Old World Blues to buy the M5 implant. I also forgot that, um, yes, as part of this experiment, I needed to have a certain level of agility to let me take the perks I want to take. So, I needed agility to be 8, not 7. And I kind of forgot I had agility that low, like normally my agility is way higher than this. And the only way I could do that was yes, just console commanding myself the agility implants to boost my agility up to 8. So uh, that would have cost me 4,000 caps back in the base game. So okay, we're going to add another 4 grand to my debt. I now owe the game 12,000 caps in the future. But yeah, the reason I needed that now is because I'd forgotten just how much XP Old World Blues tosses at you. So yes, I'm leveling up way, way faster than I was anticipating. And uh, speaking of which, we're going to be getting a lot more XP pretty much immediately. Because uh, at this point, I'm pretty much done with Old World Blues. We just need to get this wrapped up and get back to the Mojave. And uh, thankfully, as I was saying last week, that is incredibly simple to do if you're willing to just straight line the main objectives. Here we go, step outside, and there's my next objective right there. The easiest one of all. The lovely X2 array. Because let's just put together the toys we've already picked up previously, which is, yes, the lovely sneaky suit, giving me bonus movement speed while I'm sneaking. Then we just put my weapon away. And thanks to the Overtex 13, I now have an infinite supply of stealth boys I can just print. So, basically, let's just uh, slap one of these guys on right away. And see if I could do this entire mission under the effect of a single stealth boy. Because uh, I suspect I might be able to. All we need to do is just a mosey straight down in this direction. Nobody should be able to detect me or anything I'm doing. Lovely. Just straight on the top here. Watch out for any mines that might this be around. Uh, like, you know, I might go into caution, but by the time they mosey on over to me, I should be long flipping gone. No trouble. So, okay, straight past him, back into a hidden. Nobody sees a thing. There's X2 right over there. Is it going to be faster to, uh, yeah, go in the front door or just loop around to the top that way? I don't know, you know. I can't recall how easy it is to go up the cliff, so screw it. We'll go in the front door. That's all going to be absolutely fine. Just a mosey on in here. Though, admittedly, this is... Uh, Okay, that's right. Never mind. Okay, someone's detected me. That's all absolutely fine. No trouble, lads. No trouble. Don't mind me. I'm still wearing pretty good armor. Honestly, it's, you know, it's Protectron. It's not like they're really doing much to me. Then just a straight up to the top. And then even more up to the top. Lovely. Grab this. Marva. I said grab this. Thank you. And there's the schematics. Right, there's another 2,625 XP because seriously, Old World Blues is extraordinarily generous in that regard. And, uh, okay, what do we want to do? Repair up towards uh, 50, though I think it was already high enough for, yes, what I'm about to be talking about. So that's all absolutely fine. Then just, yeah, give me some more energy weapons, give me some more explosives, uh, lovely. So... Here we go, it's time for a new level, and uh, yes, we've got some things to discuss. Because you may recall, last week we took travel light, so I move faster while I'm wearing light armor. And it does kind of have a companion perk if you've got repair of 45, uh, light touch. And this one is, uh, oh, this is just really, really good. So, light armor, now you're not just moving faster, you're also getting bonus critical hit chance. Meanwhile, your enemies uh, can't really crit you anywhere near as effectively. Though, when it says that uh, 5% crit chance, which, you know, is also a thing that, say, the first Recon Berry says, uh, it doesn't actually mean the same thing. Because, uh, okay, take your seats, children. It's time for a lesson in how crit chance in Fallout works, because the game never really explains this, and it is a bit on the weird sides. 
Okay, let's nip back to the start of the episode so I can illustrate this while we're talking about it. So, in this game, here's how your crit chance is calculated. Step 1, luck. Each point in luck represents 1% chance of getting a critical hit. Luck, of course, caps out at 10 in this generation, so therefore, you can max out at 10%. Next up, add your traits in. So I chose to take built to destroy, meaning I've got a bonus 3% on top of that 10%, with the downside that yes, my equipment's going to fall apart faster. Then we've got the perks proper, finesse of course being the most famous, giving you the equivalent of 5 extra points of luck. A fancy way of saying a 5% crit chance that still applies even if you've got 10 luck. I'm not sure why the perk doesn't just say plus 5 to crit chance, given other perks and apparel do, but... Okay, the game's just inconsistent in how it describes these things, I guess. So that's another 5% right there. And because we're playing Tale of Two Wastelands, I get to blend in Survival Guru 2. So that's another 3% because I got the top tier survival perk, and on top of that, went for the variant that gives me bonus crit chance. And then we blend in any armor benefit. First Recon Berry, giving you another plus 5 to crit chance right there. So uh, you add all that together, and all of a sudden, you've got yourself a very good starting point. Specifically, a base crit chance of 26%. But John, I hear you cry. What about Light Touch? We were just discussing Light Touch. Yes, I'll get to that in just a second, because that's different. But all these sources of crit chance I've just discussed, they now get to have something very sexy done to them. Which is you multiply them based on the weapon's bonus critical chance. Some weapons have these, some don't. Generally you can spot it because yes, the effects will list a bonus critical chance, though it doesn't tell you how much. In the case of Paciencia, it's 2. So basically, any crit chance gets multiplied by 2 for any shot made by Paciencia. Basically, we take 26% and multiply it up to 52%. Though that's not as good as it gets. Christine Sniper Rifle, for example, available elsewhere in Old World Blues, that's a 2.5 times multiplier. As is that gun right here, meaning both of those guys, they've got a base crit chance of 65% with this loadout. Right, back up to the top of the dish and light touch. Yes, for reasons that aren't clear and no one ever explains, not least, you know, the perk description, the benefit to crit chance that light touch provides is not part of this calculation. Instead, it's a flat benefit to critical hit chance that gets added after the multiplication is done. So, I was saying just a second ago, Paciencia has got a 52% chance to get a crit under my standard loadout. So, if I were to take Light Touch, and if I were to be wearing Light Armor, I would simply add a 5 onto the end, up to 57%. This works the same way as Vats does, which also provides a flat bonus to your chance to crit. 5% in Fallout New Vegas, way higher in Fallout 3 at 15%. But we'll be working with the New Vegas numbers, because that's what Tale of Two Wastelands uses, the base Fallout New Vegas system. So if we were to put all of that together, take this perk, put on light armor, go into vats and then take the shot, yeah, Paciencia at that point is up to 62% chance of getting a crit. Christine's rifle, that gun, pew pew, they're all at 75% chance. And that... That's just with the standard loadout that I've got access to all the time. That's missing one other thing. The often overlooked skill magazine, True Police Stories. Boosting your critical chance, the amount varying on, you know, whether you've taken comprehension. And in this mod, boosted another 5 by, I think one of the bobbleheads, but I can't remember why that's actually 15 at the moment. But this here, this does get multiplied, so... You put this on and all of a sudden, yeah, basically a very large number of guns with the modest multipliers on them are almost guaranteed to be getting crits at every single shot until the magazine wears off. So I know what you're thinking, John, this sounds like terrible news. This just means light touch is worse than all the other ways of boosting your crit chance and uh, that's uh, only kind of true. You see, there is one scenario where light touch is actually incredible, though uh, I've no idea whether this was intended or not or kind of an accident, which is... Uh, Obviously, the first class of perks, the ones that boost your crit chance in a way they get multiplied up, is really good if the weapon's got a positive multiplier, like Paciencia. Not all weapons do. Some weapons have a negative multiplier, basically a very large number of automatics. 
so you're not spamming a huge number of crits. The negative multiplier there is gun to gun, but generally like an automatic weapon is going to do like 5 to 25% of the actual number of crits it ought to, to offset its extremely high rate of fire. So as a result of that, all those lovely sources of crit chance, your luck, finesse, etc, etc, those get multiplied down. But Vats and Light Touch, because they get added onto the end, they always stay flat. So if you're trying to make a crit build, but you still want to be using automatic weaponry, Light Touch is actually really bloody useful. And we absolutely will be taking it at some point, because it does have a very important role in any crit build. Any crit chances are always welcome. But it's not what I want to take just this level. Here we go, the reason I needed that Agility 8. The Lonesome Road perk, Tunnel Runner. Warrens of the Divide have taught you to keep your head down, your movement speed is greatly increased while sneaking in light armor. So, yes, it's not kidding. It means 25%. A bonus in light armor even greater than that given by the stealth suit. So, oh yeah, we're gonna be wanting to take this, because basically, it's travel light, but even better. And having taken that... The best thing I can now do is basically strip naked. Because now that I've stripped naked, I am going to, yes, be under the effect of both travel light and tunnel runner. Meaning all of a sudden, this is me just, yes, wandering around in my crouch pose. It is ridiculous. So let's just mosey on a straight back down again. Avoid the robo scorpions. Don't mind me, guys. Nobody sees anything. Literally just jumping straight over the top of these guys. And okay, Mobius is just yelling at me. The stealth boy did wear off, but nobody saw me. Straight out of the perimeter. Straight back to the think tank. X2 completed. Seriously, it's so convenient that all the facilities you need to visit are right by the edge of the map. Because you can just run out into the middle of nowhere and get teleported straight back to the think tank. Which is very bloody convenient. And seriously, this is my current walking animation when I'm naked. It's just... It's so lovely. It's so bloody lovely. And we're not done yet either. But okay, final facility. Let's go over to X8. Because... Yes, indeed. We've literally already passed by this one, and we can teleport straight there. Oh, and this is just perfect. I just nipped inside, and by sheer coincidence, first footlocker I tried uh, had some leather armor in it. So, uh, you know what? That's light armor. Why not? So, here we go, X8. Because unlike X13, you can't just do one test and officially be done plot-wise. In this facility, you've got to do two. It's pretty simple stuff, really. Just a mosey into a mocked-up high school, steal three files, and get out of there. And, uh, as I say, if there's any difficulty whatsoever, do just recall infinite stealth boy printer over on the other side of the roads. Fortunately, next to basically any other facility in this entire DLC, yes, it is uh, very badly guarded. Okay, basic military cyber dogs are... Uh, Anything will take those bastards down. That is not going to be a problem. Don't even need hollow point rounds, to be honest. And then we've got a handful of protectrons. Just uh, pop out occasionally, see if we can yeah, get eyes on them. Yep, there's just some turrets as well. Nothing dramatic at all. Yeah, I'm pretty bloody sneaky right now, even without the stealth boys. So uh, it is not difficult to sort this out, though. If need be, signs of 50, you can just turn the turrets off anyway. I really feel like it's not that necessary. Like, the turrets are not going to be a problem. So yes, the whole thing is simplicity itself. A terminal number one in the classroom right over here. Lovely. Then just a mosey round at the speed of sound to the library for option number two. And then just nose your way upstairs and grab the last one. Couple of dogs ambush you on the way out. But seriously, it is simplicity itself. Like, even for a low-level character, this is eminently doable. There we go. Yet more XP because seriously, Old World Blues never stops tossing XP at you. Couple of cyber dogs charge me. But honestly, at this point, yeah, there's one crit right over there. Obviously, you know, he's dead, so that just tops up my VATS meter right over there. That was another crit. That one wasn't, remarkably. And that one was again. So yeah, like, uh, three out of four were crits there. That's what I'm talking about with my current crit builds. 
just like an X13, you don't have to run the test again, but yes, there are benefits. For example, second time through, you gain the upgrade that lets you turn off the force fields. Lovely, and uh, seriously, I'm already almost level 35. You level up so bloody fast in this DLC. Oh, and the second run just to get the, yes, force field turner off for us just pushed me over into level 35. So, honestly, I'm in Old World Blues. Energy weapons all the way. Why not? What we really need to do, however, is, yes, the residential test. Where we're going to be, I don't really feel comfortable saying taking on Gabe. There's going to be a big boss dog called Gabe, but you do not need to kill him. Nor do you need to save him. You can just completely ignore him. Get the thing you're after. The plug-in for your Sonic Emitter. Then just leave. You can just live and let live. In fact, you can intervene to save Gabe if that's what you want to do. There we go. There's a Gabe. Honestly, not that tough. Will be very easy to take out. But also, not very perceptive. So let's just uh, mosey around. Uh, have a little bit of a dig in the various dig spots. See if we can find what we are after. There we go. Gabriel's Bark. Magnificent. So as soon as we grab this, yes. Trouble's gonna kick off. Because Mobius doesn't want me to get these various bits and pieces so the Robo Scorpions are about to arrive. And uh, yes, indeed. I've decided today, Gabe gets to live. This does not matter in the slightest. It changes like one bit of dialogue with one of the brains in the think tank. It has no consequences whatsoever. But screw it, I like doing things the hard way. The easy way is just, you know, letting the scorpions in game fight each other and using this as an opportunity to cocking run for it. But you know what? No. No, no, no. Gabe is a good boy and we are going to save him by shooting these stupid blaster droids in the tail. So, oh yeah. Look at that crit right there. The crit is ridiculous. That gets me all of my AP back. Beautiful. Do the same to you. They're only Mark 3, which is really not so bad. And also, I think Gabe may have just exploded. Okay, we did our best. We did... No, never mind. Gabe has not exploded. I'm not 100% sure why. Like, I just got the... No, no, Gabe definitely has died. He is very squishy. We did our best, damn it. We did our flipping best. Right, finish off the Scorpions. It is admittedly very difficult to, yes, keep Gabe alive in the event that, yes, you're playing on a hard difficulty. He's a very soft and squishy when a high-level Scorpion starts spawning in. So, okay, never mind. Gabe has to die anyway. And I'm straight up to level 36 because, seriously, the amount of XP that Old World Blues tosses at you is ludicrous. Right, just keep explosives moving in the right direction. After all, yes, this dog is about to explode. So 70 explosives seems about good. Energy weapons moving in the right direction too. Then, okay, there's no way good to put that point. So an arm could be 36. And, uh, oh yeah, speaking of which, bloody hell, we've already got another perk. So, you know what, screw it. I feel like light touch is going to be hard to beat. Oh, but then again, there is, um, yes, one other thing, which is, okay, this is just a mod thing. This isn't a New Vegas thing or a Fallout 3 thing, but I noticed this right at the beginning, and a couple of people did remind me of it last week in the comments. Because the various Fallout 3 perks just give you skill points, and yes, in a world where you've got Fallout New Vegas rules and 50 levels to get through, skill points from a perk is basically worthless, all the Fallout 3 perks were reworked, in Tale of Two Wastelands uh, to do other things. Uh, and the Thief perk, which normally gives you uh, sneak and probably something else, but I can't actually remember because seriously, who the cock takes the skill perks in Fallout 3. This instead gives you bonus pickpocket chance, and on top of that, movement speed while sneaking. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to be honest, in for a penny, in for a pound, let's cock it go. Oh, and there's the giant explosion of Gabe exploding. Sorry, Gabe, I tried my best. Right, step the next to Operation GTFO. It's just a mosey straight on past all of you. Scorpions are trying to attack me, but John, put the gun away. You'll be faster without the gun, 
don't mind me outside just a mosey on around the edge of the building and make your way for the edge of the facility as soon as possible though Okay, I'll admit, this one's going to be a bit trickier to uh, to get to. Purely because, uh, yes, there's a bit of a wall in the way. Okay, hang on, this looks good. This might be workable. Here we go, just past the tunnel that's uh, very nearby. There should be plenty. Perimeter warning. Scorpions have already lost me because at this point, yes, I could creep faster than they can run. But there we go. Straight on back. That's the technology done. Next up, we just need to go and take out Mobius. Seriously, the animation is just getting silly at this point, and I quite like it. Now, next up, I believe it, yes, this point in the DLC, Dr. Mobius would actually ambush you. There we go. We can literally see the ambush party right down over there. There are scorpions waiting to ambush you as you leave the sink. But, um, fun odd fact, you're allowed to fast travel from this here balcony, meaning you never need to actually take on the ambush, because you can fast travel both from and to the balcony. And thanks to last week, we've already got the mysterious cave tagged. So, basically, I've already made it to the dome entrance. As I say, incredibly easy to speedrun this DLC. Oh, and you know what? This is going to be an excellent opportunity to, yes, demonstrate the benefits of being able to run really bloody fast. Which is, we're going to take out this boss before it's even done waking up. Just crack open this here door. Immediately, yeah, start heading round to the left. I know it's dark in here right now. The lights are off. There we go. Lights come on. Robo Scorpion is just starting to wake up, but I'm already past it, so he doesn't know where I am. Just get up to here, nice and fast, to get over to Sonic Emitter Revelation. Open up the door straight over to the terminal right here. Should be nice and literally first guess. I made that look much much easier than it actually was. Not by much, it's a fairly simple puzzle to be honest. And there we flipping go. Basically, screw you and screw your stupid robots. And there we go, 6,000 cooking XP. Because seriously, why am I getting this much XP? Well, screw it, more explosions, more energy weapons, more unarmed, sure, why not? So step one, just say hi to Mobius because he's not really a bad chap actually. Also, the game just gave me another 6,000 XP just for speaking to Mobius and saying, hey, could I have my brain back? Because I don't even know what goes on in this DLC. That one might have been a mistake. I'm not sure. But like, just got 12,000 XP for basically pushing two buttons and saying a hi to Dr. Mobius. Here we go, level 38, max out energy weapons, because why not? And uh, okay, finally, everything's back to a nice round number. All is forgiven. Screw it, Thief level 3, let's max out Thief. So Mobius, as it turns out, was just deliberately misleading the Think Tank to make sure they stayed focused on, yes, business inside the crater and didn't go blowing up the rest of the world and whatnot. And yes, step the next, I need my brain back. And though my brain's a little bit resistant to hop back in my head and understandable, given all the nonsense I get involved with, uh, yes indeed, a fairly simple speech check convinces my brain to hop straight on back in. Oh yes, and one more thing before we go. Second door on the right from your brain, help yourself to 10 million mentats, because, uh, okay, at this point I owe the game 12,000 caps, so you know what, every little helps, I can sell these down the line. And if you need to, yes, help yourself to Dr. Mobius' scrubs are from the trunk by the stairs, and I believe his glove is, uh, yeah, right here as well. Very valuable, very useful, got some unique effects, though, uh, yeah, the real one I want is actually back in the think tank. I just forgot to pick it up earlier. So, speaking of which, on this occasion, the lighting's got a bit red and angry. And they're potentially no longer happy with me. They want to, you know, scoop out my brain again, put their own brains in it, and ride my body out into the Mojave to cause all sorts of mad science. Now, I'll admit, that sounds hilarious, and I would be willing to discuss that plan. But they're not really willing to let me be alive at the same time. So... Okay, in which case, they need to go down, and thankfully for me, that is incredibly simple. Sufficient speech or science will deal with them, nice and easy, so okay, here we go. Some nice dramatic lies going on here. So, Klein, you think I am a lobotomite? No, for my skull houses, the brain of Mobius. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard. There's no way Mobius would condescend to step inside you. 
Besides, there's no way such a thing could be accomplished. It's impossible. Ah, but you see, Dr. Klein, nothing is impossible. For science, mesons, lasers, atoms, brainwaves, they are all at my commands. You speak the truth, and the decibel variation in your voice, it is Mobius. How dare you breach the think tank, and what do you want here? And there we go, that's all we need to do. Now we just basically tell them to stay here, get on with science, and officially work for me. Lovely. I have a strange sensation that I would like that. How odd. Very well, partner. The think tank is at your service as long as you do not destroy us. And there we go, Old World Blues has been concluded and... I was kind of expecting another 6,000 XP there, but not yet anyway. So okay, let's just uh, mosey on over, grab the thing I forgot to grab in the first place. Here we go, the door on the right, average locked. So easy to miss, given it's down on the ground. But Dr. Mobius's glasses, you're gonna be wanting these. Oh, I tell you what, these have had a downgrade into the mod. Uh, right, these have got DT in the base game of New Vegas, which is very rare. Most glasses do not come with DT, but these ones do. And also, they come with explosions, uh, plus 10, intelligence, plus 2, brilliant stuff right there. So, really, really good set of glasses. Like, you know, worth carrying around for only 0.25 weights. Right, time to mosey on out, and I think, yes, this will be the point where the game gives me an ending. Though, to be honest, my ending will just be the game being incredibly disappointed in me for not exploring properly. Though, it is a strange thing for the game to say, given, you know, as I say, I could just come back here and keep exploring any time I wish. Although, truth be told, the courier had barely explored the crater in an attempt to rush through and be done with the whole thing. Perhaps that was for the best, however. Curiosity, while sometimes rewarded for its efforts, often proves to be equally dangerous. You're not wrong, game. In, get what I want, get back out again. Beautiful. Still, on the other hand, I get my organs back. New and improved. Someone's like, you know, scrub them to a lovely shine. So, my brain's back in my head and my DT's looking much improved by that. Oh, there we go. There's another 6,625 XP. Marvelous. I figured that might be coming sooner or later. Brilliant. So, okay. I think at this point we're getting close to, uh, yes, maxing out everything of use. So, uh, you know what? Unarms going up to 50. Alright, I want the shocker to be a bit better. Rest could go into explosives. Lovely. Though if you want to, there is nothing to stop you, yes, putting the synthetic version of your brain back in. So, some of the benefits are worse, but I believe, yes, you do get better chem resistance, if I recall correctly. So, you know what? Screw it. Get my original spine back on. Spineless now replaced with a reinforced spine. This is just a straight upgrade. So, more strength, more DT. And as for the heart, I lose part of my resistance to poison, which is admittedly rather useful in Old World Blues, because as we've seen, there are a fair few Cazadors floating around. Though, now we're done with this business, getting rid of poison resistance in return for healing being more effective, uh, yeah, that's going to be way more useful in general. And just to confirm, by the way, uh, but yes, now we've got up to the full set of Thief perks. Okay, the animation's just got to the point of ludicrousness at this point, I love it. And better and better, though I can come back at my leisure and explore as much as I wish. For the time being, let's just, you know, hit the transportal ponder and head back to the Mojave because uh, I've got something else I very much now need to do. Oh, there we go. Back in Vegas proper. Lovely. Just have to pop this thing away before I accidentally send myself back to Old World Blues again. Yes, now that I can move this fast, which is just all. Oh, this is so stupid, it's wonderful. Now I can move this fast while creeping, and honestly, it feels like I'm just playing Oblivion, and I've just taken my speed and athletics up to max. This is just, oh, this is beautiful. This takes me right back to the Oblivion playthrough. Yes, that means we now need to be wearing light armor, and uh, yes, there's a rather curious solution to that that's pretty easy for me to sort out. Here we go, kicking off from Freeside, we're going east once again because uh, I'm going vault diving and uh, more specifically, 
I'm going into one of the dungeons that I never normally go into because it's one of the most terrifying dungeons in all of New Vegas. But damn, um, yes, thanks to Teller to Wastelands, uh, I think I'm going to have a rather nice time in it today, actually. Oh, yeah, here we go. We're in the right place because we've got best friend Golden Gecko floating around here. One a radioactive truck, too, so... Uh, Okay, somewhere around here, buddy. Hang on, where's what I'm looking for? There we go. Even more rad barrels. Even more lovely friend geckos. Uh, straight past you guys because, uh, yes, between uh, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, and various perks, there are many creatures uh, you could just make friends with in this game. So, uh, golden geckos, uh, me and them, super chill best friends. Lovely. And next on the list... We're going into Vault 34. And let me be abundantly clear. I hate Vault 34. Vault 34 is a nightmare. And uh, yes, I think the reason I hate it is just because uh, it's really bloody difficult. Alright, it's actually a really interesting cool dungeon. In fact, it may be one of the most complex interesting dungeons uh, in the entire game. There's like water puzzles and stuff to solve inside it. Like... If I had to guess, yeah, it's probably tied with Vault 11 for being the most complicated dungeon in the game. But yes, you've got issues inside this place, such as a 1, radiation, like constantly, and 2, ghouls. Now, I know you're thinking, John, even if you didn't have the ghoul mask, ghouls are not that bad. I mean, what's a ghoul gonna do to you? And, um, okay, fun thing about that. These ghouls, yeah, that's fine. That's not a problem in the slightest, but, um... As we move on a bit, yes, I'm going to be increasingly glad I've got the ghoul mask. So, first up, we've got some hints as to what happened in the vault. Though there are various ways you can find this out. So, speaking to one of the scientists over in Come Fly With Me gives you a clear indication Vault 34 was very much a gun-focused vault. The same story basically can be told to you from a different perspective by the boomers, who are the descendants of those who left the vault previously. But yes, the vault experiment was broadly, what if we had a ridiculously large number of guns and they weren't kept locked away? The armory was simply open for all. And yes, in the long run, it didn't really work out. A slightly garbled log indicates, yes, since the riot started, the overseer removed a free access from the armory, we can't even defend ourselves, and then our whole bunch of gibberish. So, yes, at some point the overseer tried to lock down the armory, and uh, things went rapidly down a hill. Ah, here we go, the chappy I was looking for. Vault security officers, because, uh, okay, basic vault dwellers, uh, they're fine, okay? Pop them in the head, uh, no problem whatsoever. When we get into security officers, however, yeah, you can see there straight away. These guys are a lot tougher, though. Curiously, despite the fact they are literally security officers wearing a security armor, they're not actually armored. It's really cooking weird, given they're literally wearing, you know, armor. It's called armor. It's security armor. But they've got no armor. What they do, however, have is a very decent amount of health. Like, a dumb amount of health. Security officers, in fact, have 400 hit points. That is legendary enemy levels of tanky. And there are loads of them. That's why, yes, in general, this area is a nightmare. Because in normal New Vegas, you can't get the ghoul mask, so you've just got to fight all these guys. So, okay, I'm just having a lovely time not bothering. Oh yeah, there's a second one. There's just two standing next to each other. 400 hit points each, and they're just traveling around in pairs. Brilliant. Now, thankfully, yes, most people who come here are only here for one reason, which is uh, you're doing et tumor brute and you don't have access to, you know, sufficient medicine or whatnot. So uh, as a result of that, yeah, just nip straight downstairs, uh, make your way to the clinic and uh, congratulations, uh, you could just salvage the autodonk right here, mag flipping nificent, and you can fix up Caesar if that's what you want to do. But um, yes, if you want to properly explore this place, You've got a lot further to go yet. Because as was briefly mentioned on that first terminal, yes, there is a bit of flooding going on too. So, I never actually, yes, got the um, rebreather, did I? Oh, good. Good, good, good. I'm happy about that. I can't actually remember the way through this place. Okay, I'm probably going to die anyway. I mean, bare minimum. I'm extraordinarily, it's about some extraordinarily fast. Okay, never mind. I'm, 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 yep, I'm just dying anyway. Good. 
Good, 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 good. Brilliant. Oh, right, yes, the back door out of the clinic because uh, I've forgotten. Yeah, this place is a bit of a maze. It's a maze. And in this maze, uh, you're constantly being attacked by, uh, yes, super ghouls uh, who have a uh, way more health than usual. And you're taking radiation damage at, uh, like, all the cocky time. So you've got to, yes, complete a maze under the time pressure of uh, rad damage, which is just lovely. Still, bare minimum. I've got the science just, you know, skip most of this nonsense. Right, activate the pump station. Let's get some of that water out of the way. Beautiful. Seriously, just look at the number of security officers. Everywhere. And security guards too. This place is... It's a nightmare. This is the reason why I suspect, yes, if you go over the history of the channel, I've probably only been here, like, a couple of times. And uh, every time I do, it's to get what I want and then get out as soon as possible. Because uh, screw Vault 34, like... Arguably, it's a dungeon that is too well designed, okay? It's too nasty. I don't like it. I get scared here, okay? Right, that was also... That was not the right pump station. Good, 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 good. Life just keeps getting better and better. Here we go. It was here because, yes, doors, like, start existing at the point where you pump the rooms out because everything is just confusing. Right, okay, everything's going to be fine. I can't remember where anything cocking is because, seriously... I've been in this vault, like, I don't know, twice in my entire time playing this game for well over a decade at this point. But screw it, it's all going to be fine. That lets me access security station A, which strikes me as, you know, good sort of a thing. Right, lovely day. No trouble with you, buddy. Keep on keeping on. And security station A gets me right. Lock to overseer disengage. Lovely. So back the way we came in order to get to, uh, yes, the overseer's office. That was beyond the clinic because, uh, seriously, this is just a proper maze. And I swear it also spawns additional security officers because you were not here a second ago. Right. Now, I think that means go back out of the clinic. There we go. That gets me to the overseer region. Though, um, this is uh, where things might get a bit problematic because... Uh, the Overseer isn't just an Overseer. He's also, um, uh, yes, guarded by a handful of turrets. And I don't really know how the turrets are going to feel about me because... Uh, oh, by the way, say hello to the lovely, unique Overseer. The Overseer is a unique Reaver. And Reavers are, well, okay. Reavers in Fallout 3 are terrified. This is a new Vegas Reaver, which is not so bad. But on the other hand, uh, guess how much health he's got? Because the answer is 900 hit points. And he hits for 100 in melee, and he's got Reaver speed on him. So basically, this guy has the health of the legendary Deathclaw, with the hitting power of the legendary Night Stalker, and he's got two turrets protecting him. Turrets, however, they do seem... I think I just walked into a trap, because there was definitely just a bang. Also, you guys are definitely just spawning behind me, alright? I see you doing it. Okay, the turrets seem chill. That's good. That's really good. That's such good news. So you know what, buddy? Me and you, no trouble. You just stay there and do your thing. I'll get on with doing my thing, all right? Just going to be very quickly hacking your terminal. No trouble, buddy. Right, that lets us open up the armory door. Beautiful. Though while we're passing by, doesn't hurt to, you know, nip downstairs just to go and visit possibly the most well-hidden NPCs in the entire bloody game. Here we go, an SOS that's much better written than most of the other notes we find. There are still people alive buried under Vault 34, and I believe these have shown up, yes, like once in the history of the channel. Like at the very end of the very first Fallout New Vegas no-kill, I was trying to find a solution to get these guys out. But, um, yes, if I recall correctly, it turned out to be functionally impossible because you had to kill the overseer or possibly some of the security guards to get the appropriate passes. Uh, and obviously in a no-kill run, that was rather difficult. Here we go. The terminal just around the corner needs a key. And I'm pretty sure that's the overseer's key. So... Oh, I really don't want to fight the Overseer. If I fight the Overseer, is everyone else going to get fighty with me? Because if so, I'm not doing it. Right, we're just going to pop him in the head with a handful of hollow point rounds. Uh, and it's all going to work out. You know what that's... John, you're literally naked. Please tell me no one saw that. 
I think everyone's actually chill with me. There we go. Overseer's password. Uh, rad away. Don't mind me, Volt Tech Turrets. No trouble. No trouble whatsoever. Okay. Here we go. I think possibly for the first time in the channel's history, if I recall correctly, we can actually save these bastards. So, okay. Just mosey on through here. Activate terminal. Lovely. And yes, we've now got a choice. We can either seal the external ventilation, which is going to kill these people, or reroute control of the vault to them, so that they could basically get themselves out somehow or another. And that's nice to do, but it also kind of dooms the farmers around New Vegas and something, something, something. But screw it, we're going to get them out anyway. Reroute control of the vault to those guys. Beautiful. It's such a random mission, by the way. Like... Of all the missions in the game, I suspect that's the one that more than any other, many of you will never even have come across before. Because seriously, who wants to go digging around under Vault 34? It's a cocking nightmare down here. Right, that done. We can now take the door from the, yeah, first hallway down into the armory. Lovely. Because now, at long last, the armory is open. Beautiful, and uh, there are some rather good things you might want to grab in here on the way past. C4 explosive, a very good weight to value ratio, so honestly worth grabbing even if it's just for that reason. Handful of less common weaponry like grenade launchers, though you can get those from the boomers too. No, 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 what I'm really after is, hang on, where are you a hiding buddy? There she is, a very hard-locked gun case. So there is a key you can just pick up from Pearl's barracks with the boomers just to open this up. But fortunately, I don't need to flipping bother. And there she is, the pulse gun. And I know what you're thinking, John. That would appear to be the weakest gun in the game. That's true. And this gun is a bit weird because, uh, yeah, things like crits don't really do anything for this. Because, uh, oh my goodness, four damage might go up to, say, eight. But yes, why you care about this gun is because it does that bonus damage to robots and power armor. Any robot, 250 flat damage. Any power armor, 110. So yeah, very, very much worth taking. And then we've got ourselves, a, oh blimey, say hello to the All-American. Now, okay, I have been mean to this gun in the past, and that is not fair. This is a really good gun, damn it. The All-American is just a really amazing all-rounder, alright? It basically does everything, okay? The damage may not look spectacular, but the DPS is lovely. Like, it's a semi-automatic, but it fires really, really bloody fast. It takes 5.56 five, ammo, meaning, basically, ammo's common. You can get armor-piercing and a hollow point really bloody easily. It's even got a damn good scope on it. Seriously, just look at that zoom. That is marvellous. But really, the creme de la creme, the reason this thing is absolutely sexy as anything, more than any other reason, is actually how it performs in VAT. So if I wanted to, say, shoot the security guard, just look how many shots I could get off in VATs. Because this thing, every VAT shot, eats 13 AP. That is not just low, it's the second lowest in the game. You can just spam this thing in VATS all day, every day, which is really, really beautiful. The only downside being, like we were discussing earlier, VATS means bonus crit chance. So low AP syncs really nicely with a bonus crit chance or bonus crit damage, and the All-Americans got neither. It's not really made for a crit build, it's just a solid all-round gun, like... If I had to pick one gun in this game that does everything, arguably the All-American's the best contender because it works as a sniper. It works as well as an automatic when it comes to gunning down low armor opponents. It's got the 5.56, so it's extremely flexible. It may be the single most versatile gun in the game. It's just, yes, it never quite clicks for me because it's not a specialist tool. It's just a really strong generalist. And despite that, yes, that's not actually what I'm most excited about inside this room. Because, uh, like I was saying, now I'm traveling around at this speed, while being completely naked, uh, I need some new armor. And this room right here may be an excellent source of that, because... Okay, well, here's interesting. Vault 34 security armor reinforced. Okay, and reinforced Mark 2. 
not really what I was actually... Okay, hang on. I really hope that my plan isn't about to embarrassingly collapse here. Because, uh, okay, the reason I came here is because uh, in the base game, yes, Vault 34 security armor is the single best bit of light armor in the game. Even when you add all the DLC armors into this, it's still joint second best. Only the Sierra Madre generates better protecting light armor. And I'm very scared that as it's been reinforced and whatnot, it might have become, uh, yes, potentially medium. Still light, okay. Now, it's had a bit of a downgrade, but then again, it's in terrible condition. So, okay. Boosting guns. Uh, makes sense. Put that on. It's light armor. Looks pretty snazzy, all things considered. Uh, still moving at the speed of sound. Uh, let's just start improving that a bit. 13% and 1. 13% and 1. Not bad. Not bad at all. Up to, uh, yeah, DT of 11. In the base game, this was, I believe, 14. Whether that's been changed because of the addition of DR, I simply don't know. We'll need to, uh, yes, find that out down the line. But, oh yeah. This is my brand new armor, at least for now. Because the only viable alternatives are DLC armor. Because absolutely, you know, Obsidian realized light armor was a genuine late game contender. Once you added all the benefits from light armor into the game. Which is why Honest Hearts gets you Joshua Graham's armor. That is light armor but provides bonus crit of 3%. Together with some decent enough DT. And Ulysses' Duster, even more crit chance, that's plus 5. But yes, for once again, slightly less DT than you could get on this armor. Right, back out into the fresh air. And next up, we're paying a quick visit to Aerotech Office Park. Beautiful. Here we go, give it a day or two, and we've got ourselves uh, some Vault 34 dwellers uh, who are now not dead uh, and living inside Jazz yes, Apartment 300 uh, in the Aerotech office park. So, uh, yeah, these guys are here. I've saved their lives, uh, and all it took was sabotaging basically the entire agricultural effort of the NCR around Vegas. Not convinced Morning. I made the right choice here. You? Did you redirect the power stream back to our section? We thought nobody would ever manage to get past the radiation, and the ghouls. We owe you our freedom, Outlander. Please, if there's anything we can do for you. And go on, buddy. I'll accept a vault trinket. Why not? Of course. Please, take this. We carried as much useful technology as we could before our journey into the surface world. And that gets me an advanced radiation suit. I honestly can't remember whether that's actually in the base game or if that's like cut content that's been restored. Uh, seriously, this quest is not what I do very often. So, alright, we've helped these guys out. They're alive now. I'm sure the NCR can like, you know, find somewhere else to grow food or something. Okay, all that done, it's time. We're gonna find out just how cocking fast I am. And naturally, I've come back to where we did our first test last week, too. So, okay, let's get a nice round number for the start of the test here, because uh, I suspect, yes, this time uh, we're gonna be a lot bloody faster. Here we go. It is 6 p.m. on the dot, and we are going to do, yes, the journey to Elijah's Watch while standing up. If anything, yes, just as a starting point, let's whack on the power armor. Heavy armor right here. So, we're just going to set a lovely bench line. And uh, 35 minutes in power armor. Beautiful. Next up, just out of curiosity, I've put on the stealth suit. But I am not crouching. So now I'm just curious whether, yes, the game actually factors in medium versus heavy armor. So we've got 35 minutes to beat. Standing up, not creeping, in the stealth armor. So the 20% shouldn't do anything. And... Uh, I'll tell you what, we are three minutes earlier. So, okay, possibly armor weight is being calculated. That's very interesting because now that suggests that actually the fastest we could go might be if I wasn't, in fact, wearing, you know, the Vault 34 armor. It might be if I was completely naked. Okay, test the next. We're putting on the light armor, but we're standing up. So, okay, we've gone down from 35 minutes to 32. And on this occasion, as we arrive, 27. The light armor has got us up to 27. This time, however, we're going for the light armor again, but we're going to be crouching. So, okay, 27 minutes is the time to beat. 
at the moment. So this time, starting off crouching, this should... 24. So okay, light armor plus crouching is 24. Crouching is now faster than running, which it wasn't last week. We've now broken through that barrier. But based on what I just saw with, yeah, medium versus heavy armor, now I'm curious. Is nudity the way to go? Okay, I've now taken off all armor, so I'm not wearing armor at all. And I know, you know, some of the perks say, while wearing light armor, it doesn't actually mean while wearing light armor. It just means uh, while not wearing medium or heavy armor. That's all it wants. So, uh, yes, naked does still count, or rather it should do. So, okay. 24 minutes. That's the time to beat right now. And if we're very lucky, nudity might just have... No, nudity has not made any difference. There may just be a difference between, yes, medium and heavy armor. But naked versus light has not made a difference. I mean, I say that. Technically, I am still wearing some light armor. Just, okay, we need to run this again to be sure. Take off literally everything. I want to be 100% nude. Okay. 24 minutes, still the time to beat, and light armor does not count versus nudity. Now, there are a couple of other ways we might be able to slightly boost ourselves up in speed here, but we're getting into very situational stuff here. So, uh, one perk, of course, of note is uh, Atomic, which means uh, in the event that you are taking radiation damage, uh, it increases a whole bunch of stuff, one of which is movement speed by a whopping 25%, but it only works if you're currently being irradiated. However, as we've established previously, when you fast travel in this game, the game just kind of assumes that whatever state you were in when you set off, that state will continue the whole way there. So yes, if I could just irradiate myself with say like, you know, a piece of food that causes irradiation over time while I'm under its effect, I could fast travel and then yeah, just fast travel 25% faster presumably, but I can't verify that right now. I don't have the endurance to even take the perk, never mind the perk itself. But um, there is one more thing, and this one, okay, this is a wild card. Fallout New Vegas introduced the drug Turbo, which makes the entire world slow down to about a third of its usual speed, with the exception of you. Does this apply to the fast travel rules we've been investigating over the past couple of weeks? Because I don't know whether it does or not. So we're going to do one dose of turbo. We're going to come in and out to make sure that's been applied. There we go. We've got the wibble. So that's definitely, you know, in play right now. We need to, yeah, make sure we are only wearing the light gear. So yeah, that's light. That's light. That's light. That's light. That's absolutely fine. So I am now under the effect of turbo. The world has just slowed down massively. Is this the answer? Is the answer to being the fastest person who ever lived drugs? And the answer is... You just saw that. Oh. Still 1824. 24 is unbeatable. But you may have caught for just a split second when you're under the effect of turbo, even the loading screen is in slow motion. Alright, the loading screen goes super slow. The actual spinning roulette wheel, it goes slower than it normally does. It's one of the things that gets slowed down, though. Well, now I'm just curious. If I was to, like, you know, just pop in a flipping turbo, could I do this faster than the actual game thinks I can do it via fast travel? Is fast travel, in fact, slow travel? Okay, step one, I need actual, yes, data that's appropriate. So, starting from the think tank, i.e. outside, uh, how long does it take me to get to Elijah's watch? And again, I'm probably going to come under attack, aren't I? I mean, it's entirely possible. Okay, starting at 1806, we get here in 1834. So, okay, that's 28 minutes. So, slightly longer because, yes, like, it's the other side from where the balcony is. Because, uh, yeah, fast travel just assumes you go as the crow flies. So, okay, 1806. I'm crouched down. I've got all my usual equipment. That's beautiful. Everything is light. It's time to start spamming turbo 
and seeing how fast I can get there. So, okay, just straight as the crow flies, straight as the crow flies, just work around the pipes. As soon as the turbo wears off, there we go, turbo wears off. More turbo, more flippin' turbo, most of the creatures between me and John. I didn't actually set up, okay, hang on. I've become addicted to turbo, that's fine. Really need to set, like, you know, a marker, so I know which way I'm supposed to be going right now. Okay, more turbo. There's definitely enemies here. Okay, th there are enemies here. That's that's fine. We'll work around that. I assume we can outrun them, to be perfectly honest. I think that's going to be fine. It's just straight under two here. We stand to the effect of turbo. Probably not, so I'm suffering from withdrawal. So that's all good to be absolutely fine. Just keep going, keep going, keep going to the... Uh, yes, there's a giant scorpion. If I'm suffering withdrawal, if I just do several of these... Do I just get to stack them and do they just go like back to back? I think they might do, you know. Certain drugs do function like that in this game. So, okay. Straight over here to avoid any trouble. Just more turbo. The world is slow, but I am fast and we're coming up on... Here we go, here we go, here we go. As soon as it says anything about turbo withdrawal, we've just got to make it before... It was 34, right? I'm pretty sure it was 34. And come on, we've almost made it here. We've almost made it as soon as we make it to time. And the time is... Holy flip me! Okay. That was done in 14 minutes. So Turbo does not get countered towards, yes, fast travel. However, I have just demonstrated... That with the benefit of drugs, slow travel is twice as fast as fast travel. This is not the conclusion I was expecting to come to today, but here we cocking are. And on that completely stupid revelation, ladies and gentlemen, I would say that is enough for now. Let's leave things off for this week because, uh, yes indeed, I think we have done some wonderful science. But I'd say it's time to call an end to my vacation. Next week... We're going back to Fallout 3 because I guess I probably ought to sort out the Project Purity Enclave Brotherhood nonsense that I kind of, you know, started and then completely ran away from several weeks ago. Though on the way out, naturally, I need to end my vacation in style. So maybe just one quick thing in Fallout New Vegas next week and then it's back to Fallout 3 to wrap up our business in the Capital Wasteland and then we're into Broken Steel. So hopefully you're looking forward to that. But in the meantime... I've been John, this has been many a true nerd, and this has been Fallout, Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much, and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rad scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet though, I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.